We are recording. Great. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. I would like to call to order the Park and Recreation Commission meeting of April 26, 2021. This open meeting of the Needham Park and Rec Commission is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, to suspend public gatherings and as such suspend the open meeting requirement to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. For this meeting, the Park and Rec Commission is convening by Zoom as posted on the town's website, <coughs> excuse me, identifying how the public may join. Please note this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware others may be able to see you and please take care not to screen share your computer. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. So that's our intro. Um, so thank you everyone. First of all, I would like to welcome Dina Hannigan as our new commissioner. We are um, very excited to have you, Dina. So welcome and feel thank free you. to ask any, feel free to ask any questions and um, stop us if, that, if anything um, is a mystery to you or if you wanna know more um, and we'll do our best to answer your questions. So with that, um, we're gonna start with our reorganization, I believe, and I will turn the meeting over to Stacy. Thank you. Um, do you guys wanna reorganize the commission? Yeah. Kinda of gotta stay the same. <laughs> okay. So who will be voted in as the chair? I'd like to make a nomination to have Cindy Chaston be nominated for the chair of the Park and Rec Commission. I'll second that. Okay. Um, we'll go for a roll call vote here on the chair. Chris Gerstel? Aye. Michelle Geddes? Aye. Bruce Williams? Aye. Cindy Chaston? Aye. Dina Hannigan? Aye unanimous. And for the position of vice chair, do I have any nominees? I make a motion to nominate Chris Gerstel as the vice of the Park and Rec Commission. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, we'll go for a vote. Chris Gerstel? Uh, aye. Michelle Geddes? <laughs> Bruce Williams? Aye. Cindy Chaston? Aye. Dina Hannigan? Aye. It is unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, for the recording secretary, do I have any nominations? I'll make a motion that Kristen Wright be uh, nominated as our recording secretary. May I have a second? I'll Thank second that. Chris Gerstel, what is your vote? Aye. Michelle Geddes? Aye. Bruce Williams? Aye. Cindy Chaston? Aye. Dina Hannigan? Aye. Kristen Wright, do you have any objections to this nomination? No, I do not, <laughs> Madam Director. Thank and God. it is unanimous. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. Appreciate that. And um, as always, if um, if another commissioner would like to take over as chair at any point, um, please let me know. I'm probably always open to um, having that happen if anyone would like to, but um, happy to do it for the next year or so. Um, or so. Should, or so. <laughs> <laughs> or less, actually, <laughs> or less. Um, I will say many years back, we had a consultant to the commission and tell us how to run an effective board. And the first thing he said is, you want to change your chair on a regular basis. And at that point, I think Phil Roby had been chair for like 10 years in a row. Oh. And uh, we just, we ignored that advice because none of us wanted to do it, quite honestly. Um, and he did a good job, but, but that is a mark of a, of a good board apparently. Um, do we have anyone here from the public, Stacy? Anyone? We do not. Okay, so we can skip over public comment and we will go to the director's report, which was in your package. 
And um, Stacy, if you would go through that with us, that would be great. Sure. Um, so spring and summer programming are well underway. The April break programs went off last week. They were great. Uh, we didn't have any weather concerns. There was a couple mornings where we were concerned, but weather held out for us um, and it was a pretty popular program. Uh, our other programs are beginning to fill up and start this week. Golf starts this week and I believe music together. Actually, there's a whole bunch. I got a million emails today. So we're starting up a lot of programs this week. And summer planning and prep for both programs and staffing for both program side and aquatic side are uh, kicking off. There was a lot of interviews on the program side last week as we had staff in and around for that. Um, and we also kicked off aquatics interviews last week as well. Um, we get to staffing below, I believe. Uh, fields and facilities, I tried to break this down a little differently than I have in the past. Um, so I will run through it, but stop me if you have any questions. I'm looking at you, Cindy. Um, and before I move on to the next section. <laughs> Uh, for fields, McLeod and Greens are back on, and Pollard Diamond, I heard, may be fixed pretty soon. Um, the fencing is due to come in. That is a rumor. We are working with a contractor. Don't believe the hype, but it's getting closer than we don't know, so that's good. Um, we are working, the office has started to work on spring invoices, and we'll be sending those out along with requests for summer permitting. Do we have any outstanding invoices um, from previous? Oh, Kristen is yes. nodding. Yes. Do? Yes. Um, yes, we do, and we're along. working. We send it along. We are we're working through with the groups, especially the ones that permitted for the spring. Um, that you know, it, well, as the summer permits come in, as the summer permit requests come in. Um, it might be left to the commission to deny permits if there's if there's still super in the arrears if that's something that the commission wanted to do but there's still some that we're still playing catch up with and uh getting get there they're slowly still trickling in but there's still a couple a couple of, of uh, our bigger permitters so so maybe by the next Kristen, if there's still some outstanding you can let us know because i'd really rather call the groups and work with them and and not deny a permit that's absolutely you know, not what we're about, but I'm not, a, I am about calling someone who heads up the group and asking, you know, what's, what the story is. Okay, thank you. Um, great, tennis courts, we are working on replacing as many nets that need to be replaced at the courts. I know two were replaced at the high school. I haven't looked at Newman or Mills. Uh, I plan on driving by there tomorrow morning. Um, so those are getting done. And then we're working on getting the patch uh, substance to help get the high school courts through the season. Um, we really need to keep an eye on that court and really probably identify it for our capital improvement project because it just needs a redo. Um, I was up there, the cracks are significant, the poles are leaning, the fencing's rough. So uh, I think we have to take a deeper look into that particular facility. But um, that is not on the 2022 capital plan? Nope. So at the earliest, it would be 2023. Yep. Oh. All Definitely. right. Um, and then we are seeing significant uptick in activity, mostly not permitted um, activity on our court. So a lot of private lessons, a lot of people out there doing where it's clear that there's an instructor out there um, and our membership numbers are not very high. So we're gonna to start to look at uh, bringing back the tennis court monitor, which we lost in COVID um, and trying to be creative and potentially working with the CAF for a senior tax work off uh, person to, or, or multiple people to do some tennis court monitoring. And then to that end, even some playground and park monitoring if, if we have interest in that type of program. Um, sure. Yeah. Keep us up to date on that, how that goes. Yep. Thank you. The restrooms. Um, the seasonal restrooms are half open. The Fazio and Claxton are up and running. Um, Mills and Cricket were 
winterized by an outside vendor and not done well, and there are significant plumbing problems that building maintenance is working to fix now. So they've got some busted pipes that they need to fix. So those are not open. Uh, we, I recommend that we get porta potties at both of those facilities, um, in addition to Newman, um, for all of our upcoming uh, drive-ins. Um, and then there's numerous places where we could put porta potties. It's just a matter of what we can afford in the budget, um, and then where the biggest needs are. So Mills and Cricket, obviously. Newman, definitely. And then the other one that pops into mind right now is Walker Gordon, because it's pretty out there and not mm -hmm. close to anything. So yeah, I, I think whatever we can afford, we, yeah. we need to do it. Um, Mill I is think going forward too, we'll have them, we'll start to build it into the budget that we have them at the places that there are no restrooms. Okay, well, Mills is so upsetting because we, I mean, how many years, Chris, did we work on, and Michelle, right, and getting those darn bathrooms built and then into play, and now they're, no, I, I mean, I can't even tell you, probably 10 years we worked on getting those, and now they don't work. And a fine bathroom it is, Cindy, so thank you. Well, no, actually, from the beginning, it's been a problem. Yeah. <laughs> have you those usually the are. Yeah. Water would come out, so whatever, however we built it, I wouldn't want that contractor. All right. Do we um, also, from a budgeting standpoint, budget for porta potties before we can open? Because it seems like the season starts before we're able to use the facilities. So I feel like yeah, so be, there should be a porta potty in any I, place where kids are. <laughs> yes, I agree. Um, so it has never been part of our budget to have porta potties. Uh, it absolutely should be. If we're going to open the fields on or around April 1st or even April 15th, it's too, it's too early to unwinterize. Um, so yeah, my thought process is to um, look at the facilities that have bathrooms and see um, what the border times we would need porta potties for. And then for the facilities, we'd want to put them in for the whole season. Some Fields may not need them during the summer, but would need them spring and fall. Um, and just figure out what that is and start building it into our field user fees, building it into our budget, uh, working with DBW, working with um, the main user groups. DBW obviously this year is tapped as they tried to get everything COVID ready for the schools. So, um, Sometimes we work with them, but this year that was not an option. So, but, and to top that, COVID is bringing everybody outside and we, there's more of a need for bathrooms than there's ever been. So uh, we are looking into trying to get that done and figure out how to finance it. Stacy, what about the bubblers? Are all the bubblers turned on? No, we're not turning them on yet. No, we still, because of COVID? Because of no COVID, we're not turning them on. Any bottle fillers we have? could be turned on um, as long as we can turn off the bubbler part of it, which most of them can't. It's it's either all on or all off. So right. we have um, any Board of Health has requested that we keep them off um, at least for the time being. It may change. Okay. So I don't think we have any that are just bottle fillers, right? They're all cut, cut to a bubbler. Yeah. Okay. I think the there's only ones one that I know Memorial. About, yeah, Memorial is probably Memorial. the only one. The water a filler. The filler, yeah. The bubbler's like right next to it, it's not the same unit, yeah. And in frankly, I think we should move towards all bottle fillers in the future as we can replace the bubblers and just pull them out and put in bottle fillers, um, so that it's 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 more sanitary. The things that we find in those bubblers are, oh, I know, yeah. unpleasant, so. I agree, but I think porta potties first, and then we move to bubblers. Uh, although bubblers would probably be capital, right? That would be in the capital plan. If we try to do all of them, yes. Okay. If you know anybody that works for big corporations, maybe they could donate some thing towards the health of children. Yeah. 
Not me. Mm -hmm. We got a couple of commissioners here. Not me. Okay. Like Kellogg's. <laughs> okay, so basketball courts. <laughs> Uh, we've had some people complaining about not the nets, but the rims. So we're going to do a drive around this week, take a look at the rims. I look at the rims at Mitchell. They're fine. We have plenty of nets, but um, somebody wants to donate or would be willing to donate a rim, but I don't like people to donate actual rims because they're, you know, they have to fit the backboards. They're particular. You have to make sure they're breakaway, all kinds of things. You can't just put up a backyard room. So we're going to do a drive around, see what we have and what we need to replace some of those things. And we're also looking into exactly how we're going to put those lines on Perry Park. So working on that. So who would install who would install the rims? Someone from DPW? Do we have someone? Oh I would do question. it. Yeah. I would do it. You would do it? As long as it doesn't yeah. affect any union co contract considerations, we can do it in-house. Okay. The president is hiding herself because she thinks I should have DPW do it. On my union. <laughs> but. All right. Well, don't, don't. Rims go on with four bolts. They're just four nuts and bolts. They're not. Right. Okay. As long as you're not afraid of heights, you're good to go. Or the OSHA violations that I was concerned about then. Anything else? I've taken how to stand on the ladder classes. It'll be fine. Okay. Um, playgrounds. The admin at Newman brought to my attention they were concerned about people at the tennis courts in the proximity to the kids on the playground during school hours. Um, my assumption was that she was concerned about COVID. So I reached out to McDonald and he said, nope, not concerned, no concerns. Um, if the concern is about just the usage, because we close playgrounds during the day, uh, we have never closed tennis courts during the day. Um, and I would be severely hesitant to close tennis courts during the day, just because they are on school property, because two sets of our courts are on school property. Um, I know the high school doesn't get used that much during the school day, but considering the, uh, how they look, I'm not surprised, but it, it, there's no health concerns about the tennis players being there during school hours. Okay. Well, if you just confirm that with that assistant principal, I'm sure they'll yep. be fine. Okay, yep. thanks. Um, fibers are being added to Broadmeadow, or were added this weekend to Broad, Meadow, Perry Park, Elliot, and Mitchell, and potentially Greens? Greens, Elliot, Claxton, and I don't think oh. they made it, they stretched all the way to Walker. Okay. I think they made it to Cricket. I saw a pile of Cricket today. I'm sorry, Claxton, not Cricket. Claxton. 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 Yeah. Oh, no, both. I'm sorry, I saw it both. So, okay. There were, we did get a, a delivery and we had some spray. Um, and then the last thing on playgrounds, I'm going to let Cindy and Chris update us on. There was a group interested in updating the tot lot at DeFazio, which is why in your packet is the original 3D renderings for an idea of what could be happening at the tot lot. Um, but I'll let them speak about their meeting. So I'll start and Chris, you mm -hmm. can chime. So we met with two women, um, Rachel Bright and um, Kelly. Cummings, I believe, with the names, right? And um, they are interested in having the town build a playground for um, an older age group. Um, I think they refer to them as tweens. Um, I don't know exactly that age group, whether it's, you know, eight to 12, I think it's more maybe 10 to 14, I think. Um, and they're interested in doing it at DeFazio and they would like to put, um, certain kinds of structures that are um, interesting to kids that age. They think DeFazio is a good place because it is, a, it is so walkable from the Pollard, you go under that bridge. Um, and so they had some ideas about that. Um, and they thought that the DeFazio Tatlow was great because it's so big and they think it's underutilized by um, young children. Um, 
I don't know that I agree with with that last one, but that's anecdotal and maybe they're correct. Um, anyway, very, they're very interested. I don't know that that age group, how much you catch them with that kind of a playground, but I don't have kids that age, obviously. So um, I don't know. But um, Chris, would you like to? Yeah, I mean, you pretty much nailed, you know, what the conversation was about. The one point that they brought up that I really didn't realize, every school in town has a playground that they are geared towards the age group that is at that school. Pollard does not have a playground. That the access to have kids at Pollard to go to something like this, it kind of made sense of, you know, you're right, we cater towards the younger kids. Greensfield does have some younger, you know, kid apparatuses and some of the older, you know, kids can go on it, but there is no real place for tweens to kind of go to. That some of the pictures that they had, I looked at, I was like, yeah, that's nice. And some of them were more of like a sports complex type of thing where there was like three or four like tennis courts and basketball courts and a volleyball court that something like that just could not go out of DeFazio. But there were some other structures that I could possibly see in something like that. Um, the other thing Cindy and I wanted to be very clear with them is the manageable timeline of how this is, that this isn't something that if they're going to throw us money to be like, oh, hey, we expect it done by August. They understand that this would be a you know project that is done through the town. It would have to be vetted through the town. And at minimum, you're looking at a two year start to doing even something like this. And, you know, and that's even best case scenario, of even talks of starting of something like that. So they do understand this is not a quick thing. This is something would have to go through. Um, and I think both the parents have children at Sunita Williams in either the second or third grade. So I think they understand that this is something that when they their kids do get to Pollard, something could be in the works or something like that. So this is not just a quick, thank you, hey, let's get it done. We're gonna throw a bunch of money at it. They really wanna look into it. They really wanna be part of you know a user group or committee to talk about it. So I, it, it was very interesting actually meeting with them. And which yeah. group are they affiliated with? How would that, how would the money get raised? private they would i mean they, they did they don't have a necessary group yet like a name it's just two parents that have talked to other parents who have talked to other parents but they imply that they probably talked to close to 40 to 50 people yeah yeah so but, but like they don't have an official name like the greensfield group or the defazio group it's just a bunch of parents talking and you know looking to start a little momentum and um the pictures they showed us were really um sports courts mm -hmm. uh, and like structures to me and I said it is unlikely we can build a structure at DeFazio there is so much wetlands surrounding that whole complex never mind that tot light area um, and then I did go um, Stacy to that place in Waltham that playground in Waltham to look at that um, there's one up there that is, is geared to older children um, but it still looked like young kids to me um, it, it's two sections and one is eight it says in the little plaque five to twelve and so five was probably young for that, but I didn't, I couldn't see a 13 or a 14 year old doing some of this stuff or, or doing it for more than, you know, once. Um, but maybe um, I, yeah, I know my family um, visited it as well this past week and it was the same feeling. It was like, there was one or two elements that were perfect, but it was mostly for younger kids. Yeah. So I was disappointed. Pointed. Um, I was expecting to see something that would be more in tune with older kids. Um, but it's an interesting idea. I don't know if as a commission we're ready to change the tot lot from being a tot lot, but they had a good point that there are a fair number of playgrounds for very small children. Um, and their complaint or, or issue with these older kids is that there isn't anywhere for them to gather after school because every school has an NEDP program that, that has that outside space. And she, they said there is nowhere for the kids to go um, to hang out that is a kind of a safe space that it could be theirs. Um, so that's a point well taken, um, but I don't, I don't know how we solve that. Um, but we told them we were bringing it to the commission and see mm -hmm. if they would have appetite on the commission to, to look at this and um, to see if we should move forward with something. Um, but I know DeFazio is high on our priority list in terms of refurbishing that playground. But I think our plan was to refurbish it as a tot lot. Mm. I don't know, but I'd throw it open to the commissioners um, and Stacy and Kristen, if you have ideas or thoughts. 
see what the or commission no. has to say. I have, a, when it comes to playgrounds, I always have a lot to say. So yeah, well, I'll I'll I told them that they were, I actually said, you're fortunate that our new director is very um, interested and active with regards to playgrounds. So, you know, that you are quite an advocate for, for playgrounds and updating and making them safer. But anyone have any ideas, thoughts? I'm just not sure what what kind of equipment does a playground have for like ten to twelve year olds. Stacy. Uh, yeah, Stacy can answer this one. Um. So a playground is like a not exactly the right word to describe these courts. Um. They're they're more fitness based. You know. So there's a lot of monkey bars, a lot of climbing. There's a lot of uh, if you want to imagine Ninja Warrior type activities, obstacle courses, um, but real fitness. Uh, and this group's not wrong. There, there isn't anything for tweens and, and middle school kids. Um, middle schools his, like generally don't have playgrounds. And that's because playgrounds legally are aged out at 12. So they don't typically, like High Rock doesn't have a playground. Pollard doesn't have a playground. The high school doesn't have a playground. Um, because they have very specific age ranges on playground equipment. Um, with the new fitness equipment coming in, they do have, the ages are all the way through adults because they're specifically putting them in adjacent to playgrounds so that you get a broader group of people that can interact. So you could go there with your kid, the kid can play, you can get a workout in. Um, your tweens can go there and hang out. So they're not wrong. We do need something of that nature. Um, I don't think the tot lot is the right place because it's so hidden. Um, and while you want to give tweens something to do, you don't want to give them something to do in a dark corner. Um, and that's what the tot lot will be. And so I think this is a great idea where we put it. I mean, ideally greens because that's the most out there in the present if you have to upgrade a playground and not add a new one that would be the one that I would suggest but yeah it's a couple of years down the road before we really get into the nuts and bolts of what this kind of playground would look like but there is definitely a need for it and I don't think it's just for the tweens I think the teenagers I think the high school kids I think plenty of adults will be out there um, especially if you can put one near another playground or other facilities well, interesting enough, they said that these kids don't have anything to do from three to five or three to six, which is when their sports start. It surprised me that they're not doing homework. I recall that time being, I would scream like, do your homework because you got sports tonight. And But they're saying that there's not so much homework and that kids have afternoons free and they've got really nowhere to go and nothing to do. Um, so I don't know if that's COVID related or if that's a trend that's going to continue? Um, I don't know. I, I have known, noticed there's a lot less homework during COVID. Um, you know, with kids being on, even if kids are in school, they're on screens a whole lot more. So there's less and less ho homework, um, yep. my experience, but I don't know that it will stay or it could go back. I don't know. It is a weird setup, you know, high school sports get three to six and then the youth get the late ones. It, it doesn't make sense, but it does, but it doesn't. So yeah. it's a tough, it's a tough to figure out that three to six is a big gap of time where they want their independence and they want to go be able to do something, not homework. And there isn't a lot for us to offer them. So I don't know what message we should bring back to these, um, these two uh, moms, these two women, um, except to say maybe they should call Stacy. What do you think, Chris? I already gave him her number. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I think we should definitely get back to him. Stacy, you said it right. It, it is a valid idea. DeFazio probably isn't the right location. We've got to find some place where it's a better centralized location and close to an, another playground. I think that makes perfect sense. And it's easier to add on than to recreate a whole new one. And I understand why they're saying there, I mean, from Pollard, it makes sense. But also if you ever look at the tunnel of Pollard, that's exactly what the reason we don't want them tucked away in a corner. 
because of all the graffiti and all the issues in the trash down there. Uh, we're right. constantly trying to figure that out. So um, it's not that much more of a walk to go uptown if it ends up in a more central space. Right, and I mentioned that that area is somewhat remote. They didn't seem concerned at all. So I can only imagine that either they have extraordinarily well-behaved children or the children are still young because my middle school is, I mean, you had to keep an eye on them <laughs> a lot, <laughs> even more than high school, quite honestly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's a bit of a balance between like, do we use an existing field? Do we repurpose an existing field to have more activities? It doesn't, I mean, I, I wouldn't, think it's just the playgrounds that we should be considering. It should be any open space that we could use to provide that service or opportunity to, to mm -hmm. that group. Um, right. Just as we're weighing options for, you know, for all, all kids, all of those that don't play sports and still want activities to do, we should be supporting those activities mm -hmm. as well. So I just think we should broaden the scope of like usage areas and not just be playgrounds like maybe it comes to repurposing an existing field um if we need to in order to accommodate so or you know ideally just open space that we could you know repurpose and add some structures to or some facilities to but just keeping yeah now I, a bit broader than existing playgrounds maybe we could get them involved in pickleball. This age group could be pickleball and we draw those lines, whatever, however you paint those lines at Perry and we play pickleball and we solve two problems. So we have pickleball courts and we have these kids engaged. It's just a thought. We don't have to discuss it if you don't want to. Thank you. We can ask them to hang basketball hoops for us too. Right. And skateboard parks. We've and got skateboard, all yes, exactly. Monitor oh, skateboard parks. Didn't go in here. We're going to have lots of multi-purpose space, hopefully. <laughs> That's an ideal situation. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. I think that's all we have on that. But speaking of skateboard parks, what, what's up with ours? I'm getting mixed reviews and I finally just decided to have it move to our facility so I can look at it and see. I have some people telling me it's broken behind repair. I have other people being like, that's impossible. It's made of steel and aluminum. It should be fine. Um, so I, we need to get it out of Ridge Hill anyway because that's coming down. And so I am having it moved to the RRC so I can take a look at it. Dina, you have a hand up. Are you going to ask? We have a skateboard park because that yeah. was my question, like a few months ago. Even yes, I was like, I, it's exactly what I was going to ask. Where is it? Right now, it is a it is a portable skateboard park. It is in the garage at Ridge Hill and has been there for two years, um, or more. I'm not sure if it was oh, up in 2019. Oh. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. So. Um, it was at Mills. So that's 20. the plan. The next question is if it is in operating condition, where shall we put it? Right? Because it has to go in some sort of cement parking lot, can't go on the grass, it ruins grass. Um, so yeah. it's not a problem we have to solve tonight, but it is a question that will be thought of. I don't know where it was in the past. It's only been two uh, locations. Off season, off pool season, it can go in the upper lot at Rosemary, but not during the pool season um, because of right. So we had it. At, did we have it on the basketball court at Greens? That's where it originally That's started. Was the basketball started. court at Greens, and then it went down to Mills for the last time. So those have been the only real two spots. It was also at Pollard on the um, where the street hockey takes place. It was there for most of the first season. Really. That's where we taught skateboard edu lessons. Is Pollard still an option or is it cracks that bad in the tennis court? Pollard? Mm -hmm. It's a it's not a tennis court. It's just that that paved space. The tennis courts at the high school where Stacy was talking about. I'm sorry. 
could we still use Pollard as an accessible location? I haven't I seen the surfacing of Pollard. I don't know how bad it is. Um, well, I don't see why not, but you, when Matt was on the commission, he said that there was a, a huge street hockey group that uses that regularly. So, um, an unpermitted street hockey. Them. I don't know anything about yeah. them. And we'd really need to know if we were. If, if that's, if that's skateboard stuff, that equipment is not broken, I would love to get it out. And mm -hmm. if we could get it out at Mills, that would be great. Um, I don't know who uses Pollard. I mean, that Matt did say there was a roller hockey. I mean, I think it's just pickup. I don't think it's anything mm -hmm. organized. Um, and I would hate to displace those kids. On the other hand, we had this skateboard equipment, this skateboard park. It's a pop-up park. We bought it so that we could move it around, although it's not that easy to move. But I would just like it either there or at Mills. I don't think okay. on the basketball greens is such a great place because I do think kids play basketball there. Mm -hmm. so it, it is used uh, heavily, yeah. Um, and then come the fall, I think that upper parking lot is great. Yeah, because fall and spring, you can be up there in that parking lot, no problem. It's just the summer that it creates a concern. Right. I, I mean, I, I think Dave DiCicco used to move it sometimes, didn't he? He put it in the back of his truck and moved it. So yes, he did. not authorized. When can we use the parking lot in Pollard over the summer? The one that's off of Harris. The main oh. parking lot. Yeah, yeah. The upper, call it the upper lot. Yeah. Somebody used to live over there. Yeah. I don't know who. It would have been loud. I wouldn't have liked John Rhodes. John Rhodes. I would um, parking lot. So. If the, if the school was okay with it, I don't know that they would be. I don't know what how that's used, but right, that's not a spot for the summer either. Yeah, it's a good, good call. It's, it's more centrally located than Mills. Right. right. Yeah, Mills is kind of off. I can reach out to Tamitha, um over at Pollard and see what her feeling is about that. She's been great right. so far, so I'm sure she'd be up for a conversation about it. I mean, for that age group, the proximity to Pollard would be a lot better than mm -hmm. Mills. Yeah. Yes, you're right. They're easy to ride a bike or skateboard over there, right? Right. Okay. All right. Keep us updated on that, please. All right. On to what? The pools? Yep. So, pool bid, I said to you this morning. Um, it was open on Friday. Weston and Sampson was the only bidder and therefore won lowest bid. Um, the answer to your next question is it came under budget. Yeah, that was great. Uh, for yes. first year by about 14. That's huge. So, Good job. Uh, it's a three so year contract I saw. What's that? It's a three year contract. A three year contract. Um, so technically our budget that we're the FY22 budget will cover the closing of this summer and the opening of next summer. Okay. The opening of this summer is being covered by a transfer within line items for the department. Is that, yeah. that's why there's that warrant article that transfers 50,000. I was wondering what that was about. Okay, 50,000 between salaries and expenses. Yeah, and 50,000 was my best guesstimate, knowing yep. I had to get it in before this bid was gonna come to us. Um, yep. So I aimed high, yep. although I was still sweating a little bit during the opening, but we're good. <laughs> good. Is, so it, is it common to do like a three-year bid? Because I know we just kind of got into this over the last year and we did it you know, kind of year by year. Is it a very common practice to do a three years? Whenever you can, it's much easier. Okay. Well, good call. I thought it was great. Yeah, we just did a three-year bid for the bathrooms as well. Oh, good. Um, that one just got switched over, and we thought we did a bit three-year bid for the chemicals, but apparently we didn't. But that came in um, today, and Fillion was the low bidder for that, and that is who we've been using the last two years. So we are comfortable with them. And are we under the amount we thought, or when, where are we? Equal over what? Under. Under. Mm -hmm. It's equal. Yeah, it's equal to what we've done, done, have yeah. done in the past. Okay. 
terrific. Okay. I was reading my warrant today and I was going through that park and rec budget, um, wondering if anyone will ask a question because it's a big increase for us from last year to this year. Wouldn't surprise me if there's a question, which I hope the finance committee can answer, but just in case they ask if the chair or the vice chair of the park and rec commission are there, I wanted to be ready. Okay. All right. Um, Thank you. Staffing is underway. Uh, pool schedule is a work in progress. Uh, we've, we've got the go-aheads for, for time slots, for swim lessons, for swim team. Now we're just trying to figure it all in uh, to offer the best product for the public. Um, so we're just trying to iron out some details, but uh, memberships will go on sale on the third or fifth. the fifth? Fifth. 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 Other stuff's going on sale the third. 28th of April. The 28th. Killing it. I'm killing it. Thank um, you. So yeah, lots of summer stuff going on. Check out Facebook. There's a lot of information. This lady's talking about stuff the whole time. So uh, you should watch it. It's pretty interesting. I love um, seeing those presentation, that presentation, Chris, and it's great. Kim was saying we should do one every week, and I said that's a little ambitious perhaps, but... <laughs> He was very excited. So Stacy, if we have space uh, in the summer for somebody to walk in on a day pass, will we still restrict that to only um, Needham people? Yes. Okay. I had someone ask me that question today who said, hey, if I want to bring my kids there this summer, it sounds great. And I said, oh, sorry, you live in Newton or wherever he lives. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Dean, did you have any questions? Feel free to stop us. You don't have to, but feel free to stop us. I will. Thank you. Um, projects internally, uh, my rec software is officially approved. So sooner, later rather than sooner, you're going to be able to register for all of your programs of fun at Needham. We're still working on the title.com. Um, so we'll have Youth and Family Services, Park and Rec, and the CATH all on one website. Now, we originally thought we were gonna get pool memberships on this My Rec software. We are not, that was a lofty goal. We are going to spend more time doing training and potentially uh, doing a joint volunteer program with Youth and Family Services that will be our pilot program on My Rec. Um, too many factors. We're going to keep pushing out us being able to sell memberships for the pool, and it it was it was going to be too long. So we're going to stick with sportsmen and get some really good training and get everybody set up on my rec before we open up in the fall. Okay. Um, and then the other project that is now under my direction as PM is very exciting is the boat dock at Rosemary which the old boat dock looks like a T. It is floating there. It could float away at any moment. It does need to be removed. And so we're getting a new one. I've worked with conservation engineering and DVW to talk about um, getting an accessible dock. And so the best move literally for this dock is to move it closer to where the pool is to maximize usage of the current ramp that we already have down to the spray deck. Yep. And mm -hmm. so instead of trying to redo the stairs and make some funky configuration, we could use the spray deck ramp and then there'll be minimal disruption to the land to go over towards the um, water and put the dock there. Uh, I talked to conservation, there is nothing that we would be invading or be concerned. They only ask that we keep the tree there, which we definitely would. Um, so we can go on the right or left of the tree. Nothing else is of any concern. Um, so now it's just about trying to figure out, uh, now it's, we have to get new quotes for the docks. Um, and an ADA dock, there's lots of different options. We're gonna go with the removable type, um, but it just means that it's wider and it has more railings and uh, um, it's just a better fit for the community in general. So the dock may be more costly than it ever has in the past, but it will be more accessible to many more people. 
And will we require much landscaping to to make that slope um, accessible? No. No, I talked to Bob at DBW. We would uh, we would level out the land and make us a, a, a one twelfth pitch down to the water. Um, yep. And we would use the same material that is around the accessible trail, which is a stone dust type material. Mm -hmm. uh, so we wouldn't pave it from the ramp over. It would just be that stone dust, which is fully accessible. Okay. And do we need the, um, the Commission on Disabilities to be involved with this at some point? We will yeah. involve them once we get quotes and see how much they want to be involved. Um, I reached out to Tatiana forever ago and she thought this was a great idea. Tatiana is the staff liaison to the ADA Commission. Um, so once we have more information and a, more of a plan, then I'll reach out to the ADA Commission. Okay. And we, oh, go ahead, Michelle. Do we have room for storage? I just can't picture the space. Like I can't picture where we were thinking of having it versus where we would like to have it now. Like we could still have the boat storage nearby. So that wouldn't be, we wouldn't have to the be- The boat storage that's down there that the scouts built, yes. The, cro the crooked one? <laughs> the crooked that's one. correct. The crooked one, yes. That yes. can stay where it is. <laughs> we'll probably and, move it slightly and maybe level it a little, but yes, we will be able to still have them over there. So we can still access, the ramp would allow us to still access the boats without obstructing anything. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it'll slide off, so we'll fix that first, but yes, they'll be down there. First things first. <laughs> no, quick, quick question. Sorry, I didn't mean to get you, Cindy. This is something that we've budgeted for before. Like I remember when I think this is around the same time that we were opening the pool, we knew we weren't going to be open the pool and do the dock at the same time. So we've already budgeted this. Oh, yes. I, this is just a project that I inherited. Okay. Um, the money exists. It's just a matter of getting it done within the budget. Okay. Um, so I know we saw some conceptual designs that were like, right. wow, just very, you know, modern day ADA accessible. And, you know, that's what I still have in my mind. So to hear, you know, that this is getting closer and closer, this is something that's been on the, on the docket for a while. Yep. Yep. So and, uh, I will keep you posted as it keeps moving on, but. Okay. The, um, the exchange club at some point stepped forward and wanted to donate some kind of folks to us. So. Keep that in mind because every now and then I get asked about, well, when when can we do that boat thing? Uh, we need a dock. We we don't want a boat before we have a dock. So uh, the other the ex that's very nice of the exchange exchange club, um, but it's not just the boat on the water. It's the boat in the building and storing it right. in the off season, which is tight quarters down there already. So we would have to really. Those right. You, I mean, you may not. Right. We've all gotten those gifts that we didn't want, so we would need to say no up front. But um, just to let you know that that is out there, and I believe that money has been earmarked. But that doesn't mean we can't change that. Paddle boards. Okay. They can donate paddle boards. Perfect. Okay. Um, so that's it from the project sides, and then CPC updates. Yes, uh, CPC. Um, since our last meeting, we have approved everything to go onto the warrant article minus the Emory Grover uh, is going to be, for lack of a better term, punted to a further date. So it will not be on this special town meeting or regular town meeting warrant articles. But all the other articles being affected by uh, Park and Rec are going to be the McLeod design renovation, the synthetic track resurfacing, the Fisher rail trail identification markers and the give me a hand Kristen come on oh I mean we've got the reservoir reservoir yeah. set yeah reservoir yeah. sediment Moving removal forward and we also have the town common which is not park and rec but we still believe in open space so that would be something that is of interest to us I and heard well, that was probably one of the best speeches given by the way I have a question um speaking of track when they redid Memorial, how come they didn't put a track around the field? Does anybody know? I hate to say it, Cindy, you'll probably be the best one to answer that. I'm the oldest, because I'm far and away the oldest. So 
we decided to put the track at DeFazio because it fit. It fitted DeFazio oh. and it didn't really fit. So if you would put a track around the perimeter of Memorial, it wouldn't be the right size. It wouldn't right. be. Oh, okay. not, that, not that I'm so sure what we have at DeFazio is the right size. And Michelle would be the first to talk about that. But it wouldn't have been the right size. So instead, they did a walking track. Okay. Okay. Just curious. Yeah. It just wasn't space for that. Yeah. Well, baseball diamonds and all that stuff. yeah oh right right I forget that baseball diamonds it's kind of off in the corner there okay right thanks um, okay just okay. random question sorry no. no it's good to know good to ask those questions okay terrific um so thank you Stacy and Chris that is our director's report um additional discussion items um so special town meeting is this Saturday afternoon outside at Memorial Park in the um, parking lot. Um, Chris and I are town meeting members. I don't know anybody else is a town meeting member. So um, anyway, we will be at that meeting. Hopefully it finishes on Saturday afternoon because if it doesn't finish, we then go to Sunday afternoon, which is That's great. Uh, a very exciting way to spend a weekend. Um, but the weather looks okay, I think, right? I saw yeah. something tonight which looked like there's no rain. So um so um in special town meeting that i think of interest to us is the budget and mm -hmm. then the cc articles right i mean those are the ones most interesting to me as a park and recognitioner um and then the annual town meeting which only has a uh, does it have six or eight warrant articles it's actually very short that's on mm -hmm. monday night uh or is it five o'clock monday i guess i think um whatever time um, that's mostly, if not completely zoning, I think. So that will be interesting because that's the, uh, kind of a hot button this year, right? So, um, I'm happy to say that, um, as park and rec, we don't have any input on that because that's a tough one, but as town meeting members, Chris, you and I will be there. Right? We will Sitting very close yep. to each other, but yep. within social distancing. <laughs> we social distance next to each other. Um, any questions or comments on town meeting, special town meeting? No. Um, Stacy or Kristen, will either of you be there possibly? Would I miss a town meeting? Cindy? All right, so Chris will be there and Stacy's <laughs> laughing because she's not coming. Oh, we're not allowed to be there. That is so, so not true. That is so not true. Okay. <laughs> Um, you're allowed, and in fact, you would even be able to speak if you wanted to speak. You would be recognized by the moderator. But that, um, I have a thing. You have a thing. Yeah. You have, have you able to, to drive you there? I'll drive you. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's those two items. Next discussion item is conflict of interest and in commission on boarding. Um, so I'm going to speak briefly, and I'm going to turn this over to Stacy if she would like to address it. But um, so I suspect that um, each of us have some kind of a conflict of interest with um, Park and Rec. Um, I, for example, belong to the Needham Golf Club and we, we run some golf programs at the Needham Golf Club and I should recuse myself when we vote on those prices. Um, and I should send a letter to the town clerk, I believe every year that just tells her what I belong to. Um, Chris Gerstel's active in Needham Baseball uh, Michelle is um, Needham Track Club. Um, Dina, you are now uh, girls field hockey. And Bruce, I don't know if you have a conflict. You're a hockey coach, but I don't know that we have anything to do with hockey. So you may be the only one who's unconflicted. I, I don't think I don't think I have any conflicts at all. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure you do either because we don't have anything to do with with um, ice hockey. Um, so you, so you would be, yep. All right. So Stacy, tell us what we should do for how we handle it. Yes. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. So we're going to go through these 18 pages, page by page. I'm going to read oh. them while you take notes. Speed it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause, cause Bruce isn't conflicted. So he's in a hurry. Yeah. Um, should, so I'll be sending that. that around. Um, that, you know, Dina and Bruce will be on doing some onboarding activities and meetings with you so that you can meet, um, you know, some of the departments that we work with or other groups in town that we work with regularly. 
um, so that you know who all the players are. Bruce, we should have done this in the middle of COVID, but you didn't have any conflicts, so we weren't worried about it. Um, but I'll send the handbook around. When you, I assume, um, but I'm not a board member, that when you get elected, you have to go through the ethics commission training, which, um, you know, it's online training that tells you all the things you can and cannot do. Um, and I believe you do that every every time you're reelected. So every three years. So did they um, tell, did the town clerk tell you about that, Dean, or is that how you knew about that? Or <clears throat> Yes. Um, yeah, there's in that I received a packet and it was in that packet. So I actually completely forgot about it until tonight. So I, there's a link and everything. I have to get on it. Yeah, it's um, very I mean, exciting, I, the training. I, I think it took me about a month last time. And, and Bruce, did you get that information last year when you came on board? I actually redo it every single week just to make sure I'm up to date. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> maybe Bruce should be the chair because he's <laughs> much more up of this than the rest of us. <laughs> let, let me mute myself quickly. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so I'll send that around to those those of you that don't have it for. Well, I'll send it to the whole group actually. Right, and and Stacy, do you have a? Um, a template or anything for what we should send to the town clerk because I know I used to do this years ago I'd send her a, a letter for example I think if you belong to the YMCA she, you should the child's your YMCA she should know that just because we do stuff with them we have programs with them and just um do we have a letter probably somewhere in our drive we have a, a template um that if we find it if we okay. don't we can reach out to the town clerk but um okay. I'm assuming somebody has it, and if we can find it, we'll send along. All right. with and I will also look because I, I know I used to do it, but boy, it's been a long time since I've done that. Just has kind of slipped. Um, so anyway, we need to do that so that we don't open ourselves up to um, you know anyone criticizing us or doing anything that's wrong. We don't want to be um, you know on the wrong side of that stuff. So okay, all right, thank you. Um, next is this. Is it? Nuari, is that how they're? Nuari. Um, the vision statement, it was in your packet. Um, yeah, it's on page four, uh, starts on page 13, and then it goes to, I believe, 15 or 16. So the town manager is um, in the select board, I guess, are asking us if um, we so the would select adopt this? Ad adopt the policies as part of our own or in addition to our own policies, but um, we don't actually have a, I need to find out exactly how they want us to adopt it and, and present it, um, but oh. it is something that needed to be brought to you so you can mull over, um, but they do want us to adopt the overarching principles of Nuari. And Kristen, can you go back after tomorrow morning and update it to so that noir is in all caps yes thanks um so i'd let us know i read through it quickly um i would leave it up to the commission i, I can't imagine that we wouldn't ad adopt this and if it is as as simple as us making a motion to adopt it and then voting um we could uh move it to an action item for our next meeting or a future meeting but a near near future meeting um unless the commissioners have a different idea um or any comments on that hearing none okay okay that would so that'd be my proposal that we would um move it to an action item for next time and um unless there is some <laughs> different format yeah, I'll speak with town management and find out exactly how they want us to adopt these, like whether it's on our webpage or part of our mission vision or our overarching goals or exactly what they're looking for. Because um, it was a pretty broad, like, we want you to adopt this. Yeah, and I would think that if the select board adopts it, that that would cover all of us. But if they need us to do a separate thing, I obviously we'll do that. I would think blanket adoption, but whatever. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. 
pool pricing and approvals. Okay, and that's page 17. Is that yep. Okay. What do you need from us? Cindy, would it be helpful if I shared the screen so we could look at it together and we can go through and then you can either itemize and say, these are great, we approve one by one or we can do them collectively? Um, sure, I'm, I'm looking at my screen, but if that would be helpful to the commission, sure. Sorry. So here are, you guys hear me okay? Yes. So the first group is basically youth swim lessons. Um, we'll do 10 30 minute lessons. So two weeks, Monday through Friday and member rate, we are suggest recommending $50 versus a non-member um, for $80. Now, as a caveat to all of these, non-member means resident. There will be no non-resident uh, lessons or programs offered at the pool or in general. Um, so just be somebody with a membership, somebody without a membership, 50 versus 80. Um, Shark swim team has been approved at a much li more limited capacity. And the member rate is, it has dropped from last or two summers ago. And the reason being is their meets are not the same. They're all virtual. So there are no in-person meets. So they will only be using the pool four days a week and not four days and for meets. Wow. Um, so that's why for this particular summer, we dropped, I dropped the rate a little bit. So I'm recommending $200 for members and $300 for no members. Um, in in addition, rate? what's that? What was the original rate for Duwame asking? Uh, Kristen? <laughs> uh, for, 2020, yeah, for 2020, the approved rates were 250, 350. Okay. Um, and in addition, even if the league goes to in-person meets, we will not host any um, unless things change drastically by our Board of Health, but we wouldn't host any other teams on our deck. Um, so 200, 300 for swim team, daily pool admissions, and these are for people that are not, do not have memberships, would be $5 for an individual and $20 for a family max. And then Bridge to so, Fun is that program that we are running in, in conjunction with the extended school year program, the four weeks in July, where kids will be basically coming for extra help in reading and math and languages. Um, it's a four week program and the whole program would intermittently use us during the day and then come to us after their morning session of learning. Um, and so the whole program would be $500 for the whole four weeks. Okay, um, thank you. Any questions from the commissioners? Random, and again, not trying to overthink this, in regards to the Needham Shark swim team, in regards to the virtual meet, who will be shooting the virtual meet? Like, is that something that the Nobody. shark, oh, so it's just, it's so like basically what they camera. do is they swim, they time themselves, and then they submit their times. Okay, so, so it's not actually, like the live. There's no filming of any kind. Okay. Okay. I try to avoid that filming on deck at a pool whenever possible. Okay. Good to know. Uh, Stacey, do you, or, or maybe Christian, $5 for a daily admission seems low to me. I thought we set that daily rate higher than that in 2019, I guess our last season. There's still time slots, Cindy. So it's only an hour for a oh. class swim or an hour and a half for a family swim. So it's Got not it. the full day. So it's not a whole day for $5. You get an hour. Got it. Cause I think we might, time slot. we might've been at like $15. Does that seem mm -hmm. right? That would make more sense. Yeah, no, this okay. is just for one time slot for, per day. 
Got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, quick, Michelle? Just, sorry, the bridge to fun activity. Can you just recap that again? Sure. So um, it's a program that the schools are doing. It's, um, I believe it's like 8.45 to 11, 11 o'clock, Monday through Friday. And it's kids that are selected to come in every day for, it's called, it's like an extended school year. So math, whatever, academics. Um, so we're creating a program to give those kids the ability in the afternoon after they're done to come to us to, for our program, like our typical program at Elliott. Um, during the morning times, each group would get like a half hour slot where they would come to our counselors and our counselors would run an activity. So they would have basically a movement break with us during the morning. And then in the afternoon, they would just be transferred over to us. And it's at the same facility. It's at all at Elliott. It's all at Elliott. So it all, they would all come to the pool, 40 of them? No, this is not pool at all. It's okay. Just, that's oh, that's why I was confused about. It. Got it. Yeah, okay. this is the I only one. Oh, yeah, it's the only one that's not pool related. Okay, because <laughs> I was like, I thought we said we weren't doing any programming at the pool. Okay, right. got it. <laughs> last week, last meeting, we voted on programs. We didn't have the exact details for this because we were waiting on the school, but now we do. Got it. Thanks. Michelle. I think that's great. I I missed the last meeting too, so I didn't. I just re did the recap of the notes, but that's really helpful. Yeah, no, it's, it's gonna be a really cool program. And the fact yeah. that we can also help them for movement breaks in addition to after, I think is is really cool. That's great. Um, uh, so any those are... All right. Um, I would um, entertain a motion to approve these rates. Stacy, can we do it in one motion if there's no objection from the commissioners? Cindy, you're the chair, so you can definitely do that. Oh, I, I don't like to take advantage of that power. Okay, um, I would entertain a motion uh, to approve these rates if someone uh, feels that coming on. A motion to approve the summer program fees. Do I need to list them all, Kristen, or is it as noted? In the summary, uh, and, if you could just say and pool, pool and, and pool. You good. <laughs> I will second that. <laughs> Thank you. Is there, any, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll come to the vote. Um, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Abstention? The chair votes aye. Okay. Passes you. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy and Kristen. Okay, now special events. Wow, this is a lot. Um, so, Dina, for your information, um, the commission approves special events, which are those things outside of field permits. And typically, we get two, three, four of them, maybe, um, maybe half dozen in a season. But we're finding since people, um, since groups can't meet indoors, that everyone wants to get outdoor space for things from birthday parties to groups you've never heard of because they can't meet inside. So there's been an incredible increase in um, requests for outdoor space, which is um, somewhat of a struggle because it also, if you, if you read through it, it conflicts with some of the field permits that we've given out. Right. So we're going to figure out how to do this and to balance it because you know we'd love for everybody to be able to use our space outdoors as much as they can. So here we go. So what we have from um, Stacy and Kristen is um, a recap um, of each request. And then they have given at my request um, a copy of the special event request, which has all the detail in it. So that's why we have so many darn pages in this package. Um, so the first one that comes up is Needham High Baseball requesting the use of the Carlton Pavilion to host a leadoff night season celebration. Um, do we have any comments on this one or any questions? Stacy, this is at Memorial Park. So um, 
the trustees would also have to agree with this? It is not a memorial no. park. They have oh, no, I'm sorry. a town meeting. It, it's not. We ask them to move. I'm sorry. Um, so it's not. Um, okay. Any questions or comments on this one? The only additional change is the the rain date we're working on. They they <laughs> might change if there's rain on Friday. Um, they might be looking for a different date than listed on the original request. Okay. Is that the pavilion at DeFazio? Yeah. 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 Okay. A hundred people seems like a lot, no? There's It'll be the pavilion down. and the green space around it. Oh, okay. Okay. So to answer your question, Dina, yes, it's a lot, but that's the maximum that we could even imagine being allowed there, regardless of state restrictions. Okay. Okay. Um, if there are no questions, I would entertain a motion to approve this. Um, I'll make a motion to approve it. Is that what I say? <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Is there, is there a second? I will second. Okay. Um, Stacy, do I need to do a roll call vote because I can't see everybody? No. I can see everybody. Okay. Um, all, is there any further discussion on this one? Hearing none, we come to the vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Passes unanimous. Thank you. Uh, the next one is uh, Boy Scout Troop 19, um, Town Forest Overnight. I think we have done this with them before. Um, Someone, Stacy, has to notify the police that they will be there and that they will be parking overnight and sleeping overnight. Yes, and they have to get um, a permit from the fire department to do the bonfire. Hmm. Okay. And is that when the police get notified? We have to do that. I think we notify the police just to make sure that they've been notified. Um, okay. But the group will be responsible for re reaching out to the fire department and we won't issue the permit until we get the approval from the fire department. Okay, all right. Any questions from the commissioners on this one? Hearing none, uh, do I have a motion to approve this? Make a motion to approve the Needham Boy Scout Troop 19 uh, overnight camping event for April 30th through May 1st, contingent on receiving approval from the permits from the fire department. Great, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. For the discussion. Right now we come to the vote. All those in favor of approving, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Passage unanimously. Thank you. Okay. Now we have the high school environmental action club. They want to use the quarry. Let's see the details of this. We're on page 36 in the packet. Um, small presentation. Do you see any issues with this one, Stacy? I, I don't know anything no. about the environment. They'll do a presentation. Well, they're going to pick up a lot of trash. Fabulous. Okay. Any and questions? The only thing is, it's like looking at the dates. They're going to be there forty-five minutes after the Boy Scouts take off. That is correct. And we'll let let we'll let both no groups know so they understand. Okay. Um, I still, I think there's enough space for the cars. It's just being safe while they're transitioning. Okay. Um, I'd entertain a motion for this. Make a motion to approve the Needham High School Environmental Action Club uh, presentation for May 1st, 2021. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll come to the vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Pass it unanimous. So now we have a resident requesting use of some property anywhere uh, for a birthday party. So, so no, no location was was noted on the permit. Um, I am trying to reach out. I did let them know that. 
this would probably be moved to the next meeting if they did not get back to me by today before the meeting. Um, they did not get back to me before today, before this okay. meeting. Um, so I would ask that we review at the May, next meeting on May 10th. Okay, great. Um, Kristen, what do we do when an individual wants this? What do we do for insurance? Do they have to get some kind of a rider on their homeowner's insurance? Yeah, we require, we they have to get a one day rider from their insurance. Oh, okay, all right, just curious. And submit it to us before they can get the permit. Okay, so we will kick this one forward to another meeting um, when we have more information. Okay, terrific. Okay, the next one is uh, Broadmeadow PTC. Um, wants to use the fields of Broadmeadow for a fourth grade event using knuckle bones. Um, so we have a conflict with Needham baseball and softball by 30 minutes. Uh, Commissioner Gerstel, do you know anything about that permit? I will, if you can give me a few minutes to, or a few moments to look at that, I will, but... Uh, Public calendar did not show since I, I learned some things about the baseball schedule last meeting. Did not show anything on that date at this time, um, but they're only out to about the 7th or so of May at this point. Let me see here because their calendar is public. May 7th is a Friday. Wait, wait. Sorry. Yeah, this is the I'm sorry. May 19th, when, I apologize. Okay, May 19th, yeah. I think what Kristen's saying is baseball's calendar isn't updated that far out. So we'll have to find out from Needham Baseball Softball. Yes. Okay, so we can't yes. really. Can't make a decision at this time if we don't know what their schedule is. Or we could ask baseball to not schedule anything there until 6.30 if their schedule is not set yet. Okay. Mm. And then I just want to note, Knucklebones is actually a vendor that this department has used for activities in the past, um, and they're very, they're very good, and they're very safe generally. Um, is it a problem if we push it to the next meeting, which looks like it's May tenth? Does that give the PTC enough time to work on this? I I can tell them that it will have to be pushed. Um, until the or if you want to approve it with the caveat that we check in with baseball to see if it's available. If it's not available, we can bump it. If it's available, okay. you can approve it. Okay. I mean, I, I don't mind that if the commissioners don't, we could have a motion that um, conditionally approves this um, subject to working up that time with you know, baseball and softball. Yeah, I, I would agree with that because it only gives them like nine days to figure everything out. Right, right. Okay. Well, would you like to make that motion? Anyone? <laughs> I, if I could read the screen, I'd read it again. But I... So, if you, Bruce, if you would make a motion to approve the Broadmeadow PTC. Um, Using the Bride Middle Field fourth grade event, um, subject to working out the time with Needham Baseball, I think that would be a good motion. I would agree with that. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Second. Uh, and I'm going to ask uh, Stacy for your advice. Should Mr. Garstel recuse himself since Needham Baseball is involved here? For know. permits? No. Okay, perfect. All right. Just checking. I don't want him to be in trouble. Okay, so we have a motion and a I'll second. Second. A second, thank you. Um, we come to the vote. All those in favor of approving the motion, please say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? All right, passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, BBYO, I'd never heard of this group before. I had to look them up. Um, I don't know that we've ever dealt with them before, Stacey. It was new to me. We have okay. not. Um, I actually spoke to them because their original request was for Sunday, meaning yesterday. Um, and it 
explain the way that this works. It is a nonprofit organization that is Eden based. Um, and it is looking to just have a little bit of green space to have with their seniors, a max of 30 people, uh, 30 minutes. Um, uh, sorry, it uh, uh, just intersects with Girls and Women for 30 minutes, but um, at that time, it seems like we're probably okay to um, share the space, especially with that number. Because does oh. Girls on the Run use the track plus the the grass area and the pavilion during that time? So they have full permit for the field, for the track as well? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it feels like that seems like enough space yeah. for both Definitely. plenty of space. Yeah. So I, I had a couple questions and um, it's because I don't know this group. Um, they said they don't need lights and yet they want the time till nine o'clock. Even at that time of year, it will be dark by nine o'clock, right? So they said no to the lights, but... Um, does it make sense that we would permit something that will go into the dark and not have lights? Because I don't think that makes sense. No, uh, I think we'll have to, to reach out to them again and talk about what timing and what they're looking to have because the lighting, even the safety lighting isn't going to be enough lighting for an event of any kind. Right. And, and may not want to pay for lights, but I, I don't think we can permit something that's in the dark. Um, yeah. And the other thing is that they're going to have music because I read the, I did read the permit. Um, and do we know anything about that music? And again, just because I know they are, are um, have a Needham connection or I think they're actually in Needham, um, but I don't know since we've never dealt with them that they understand um, music and sound. I mean, they understand music, but you know, how that sound carries at that time of night and the neighbors, um, I just wanna be sure they keep it down. We'll speak to them specifically about the timing and the sound ordinance and any music okay. amplification. Okay. Um, what are they going to be doing? Did they say? I think just celebrating their seniors, like a senior night. Yeah, that that's a good question. I, I couldn't figure out. First, I thought when I read seniors, I'm like, senior people? I'm like, oh, teenage, high school seniors. Oh, that's what I was thinking, that it was senior people. No, 12th graders. Yeah, oh, it was senior oh. people as well. What does BBYO stand for? Oh, I had it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm guessing the YO is youth organization, but I don't know. It is a, it is a teen. I, I looked up, it is a Jewish teen organization, but I didn't see the BBYO explain. Um, yeah, I definitely think more discussion with them about music and sound and lights is definitely needed. We can, yeah, it says if, if you want to bump this to the next meeting, we can ask them for more details and a bit better description of what the event is going to look like, and then we can vote on it on the 10th. Okay, I, I would like that just because Know them and they don't know us maybe they do but um you know it says we're bringing in a speaker system for music i and we just want them to be aware of you know we really got to get along with our neighbors um and they're bringing in a sweet the team, team truck that's the request yes uh, okay maybe yeah. like to bump this information from them Okay. Well, new. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's see. Then we go to into June at your door music. So this is this a music request has one. been removed. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Moving okay. on. Removed. Okay. We won't have to spend any time on that one. Thank you. Um, and now we have someone who wants to host a nine-year-old birthday party at Mitchell on Saturday. It conflicts with Needham baseball. Um, we will have to reach out to them because their mm -hmm. schedule is not updated that far out. Okay. All right. So let's hold it. I'd like to hold off on that one. It's pretty far out. Okay. We can do that. All right. Uh, um, 
And then lastly is the Norfolk Lodge, which I don't know that we have permitted anything like this with them before, have we? Kristen, do you remember? No, I think this falls right into the realm of usually they'd have this inside and they're trying to be creative and use outside space so they can have a little bit of a, a gathering. Um, they are looking for a, the use of a softball diamond. So it's a different kind of request. Um, and, um, you know, they're looking for either Claxton or Mills. That's their request is one or the other. Yeah. Uh, I don't, obviously it's August 14th. Um, so this would fall into the summer category of summer schedule for field use, which we don't have available yet. Um, they did request that it be heard at today's, me at today's meeting. Um, mm -hmm. So it is here. The, the estimated number of people seems kind of low for a picnic, family, family friendly games and softball. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know much. Where is this lodge located? I have a very supportive group of stuff that goes on in Needham. Are they in Needham? Aren't they next to the library? Like, isn't there a headquarters? Like, there's the Mason was, Hall, and then there's something else, I thought, like next to it. They, they are very, but I don't know them. Um, and Kristen, why did they need it for tonight? Do they need to make their plans this far? That is my guess. This is a Needham-based lodge. Okay. Um, it is exactly where Chris said, on Highland Avenue. Um, so I believe they're just looking to plan, be forward thinking and pl big planners. Um, I'm happy to have them tell them that you want me to talk about it at a later meeting. But uh, I mean, it came in, it was submitted, so. <laughs> What is, what is the I, typical I, field? Oh, sorry, Cindy, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Michelle. Are, I mean, I assume there's summer baseball, so are the fields typically booked up, or are we pretty confident that there would be an opening and we could accommodate? I don't actually have the answer to that because this past summer was my first one and it was not typical, so I don't know. But Maybe um, somebody that's more versed in scheduling baseball, softball might have an idea. The only suggestion I would make is I would go more for Claxton than Mills, just a because of parking and because of the neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. In regards to scheduling lies, I, I, you know, I, we would have to ask baseball what their intentions are for summer. Because you just said last summer was different. Who knows what they're doing for this summer? But if any suggestion, aim for Claxton more than Mills. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Mills is in the middle of a neighborhood and I um, think they're talking about music. Um, they may be talking about a tent. Sounds like an awful lot for 20 people. Well, Bruce, if you and I want yeah. to go around and check it out, we'll go. We'll be 22 people. Uh, you, you bring the cooler. <laughs> I'll pick you up. Yeah. Well, uh, Sprite and Diet Coke, right? Okay. With a lot of ice. Or Snapple. <laughs> right. No, I would agree, Bruce. It looks like a, looks like they've got a lot planned for only twenty people. Right. It would seem like it's probably going to be more than that. Um, but they said twenty. Well, estimated vehicles twenty max. Um, but they want to have a grill, a small tent. We would not need another permit from the fire department. Um, if they wanted a tent, we would have them meet with Eddie or somebody from Eddie's team to stake it out so that it doesn't hit any irrigation. Um, yeah. Or they would not stake it at all, and they would have to use cinder blocks or something else to hold it up. Right. So, do you think we need more information on this, or um, I don't know if we can approve this? I, do we even know that Claxton will be open? You know, we used to close our fields in the summer. Every grass field closed. Um, and the commission would fight one. We would have to fight tooth and nail to get one field open. Um, we can reach back out to them and find out more information. My guess is 20 is a typo. If there's 20 cars, yeah. there's 20 people. What is right. Okay. Anyway, right? 
It's not until August. Right. Well, we have plenty. We can okay. hunt that one. All right. Why don't we do Okay. Good. All right. So that's it for special events. Thank you. I don't know how hard those are to um to pull. Oh, oh wait, you going oh, oh, late. Yes, Madam Chair, there is one additional one that I emailed separately. Page number 88. Um, it was unfortunately submitted and missed um, using the regular field use. Like, I want to use a field every Tuesday for... They use the field permit instead of a special event permit. Yeah. Um, so this is the information that was submitted. The request is prior or... But yeah, it will start prior to your next commission meeting. So that's why um, we moved for Stacey want to get it in this meeting. So, okay, I appreciate that. Um, From St. Joe's requesting it for the 10th and the 11th at Greensfield. It's um, Monday, Tuesday. Right. Do you have any issues with that, Stacey or Chris? Do you think that it's okay? It's Chris? No, I mean, I know that Greensfield was hard to get back online because of the overuse that we used. Is it possible to do this maybe at Memorial on the turf so it doesn't get, say, wrecked as much as, say, the grass and other stuff on Greensfield? Because I know we overuse that and we're really getting it online. If it's just games, is that possible to do it on the turf field at that time frame? Because it shouldn't conflict with any high school activities going on. We would have to get approval from the trustees. Do you think we should try that? I mean, I'm with Chris. Greensfield has been closed until like now because we were trying to grow grass, right? Sure. I can reach out to them this week and find out. Um, the problem is that this date is before our next meeting, right? So that's the catch. If, if the trustees, for some reason, say no, I still need an answer for St. Joe's about greens. Right. So what would Eddie say to this? Would he be, oh, my God, do not let another school group out there? Or would he be, yeah, we're OK? I mean, I'm I think it depends asking. on the day. So I don't know. But I can find out. OK. I think okay. in, I mean, I'm Anytime there's good weather, greens is getting pummeled. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. if it's permitted or not permitted or open or not open. There's people out on it. Uh, yeah. And, and have been all along. So it's not really getting rested. It's just not getting permitted. Right, right. So I think, the, I think Memorial Park would be ideal. We just have to get approval. Could we use the basketball court at greens? They're going to go on the grass anyway. So if you everywhere. say, hey, use the basketball court, they're going to use everything. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll make a motion to tentatively approve if the Memorial Park trustees agree to host the St. Joseph's request for the dates listed. And if not, with Eddie's approval to move it to Greens. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Well, we'd only have to approve it if they don't approve Memorial, right? Because we don't. Correct. Yeah. So, it, yeah. But I mean, with it being this is, you know, they're going to have it before our next meeting, have a backup plan for them right now. Yeah. I would second. Okay. Any further discussion or questions? No. Okay. And Stacey, Kristen, you can work with that, that language and that motion. Okay. Um, all right, so having no further discussion, we'll come to the vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Passes unanimously. Now we're at the end. The <laughs> special event request. Whew. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Kristen and Stacy, for sending that detail. We appreciate it. Um, next is we have meeting minutes to approve from last time. I think that there's only three of us that can actually vote on this is that correct wait was bruce, bruce here correct. was bruce here last time last yes time. that's one of the edits to the meeting minutes oh okay my mistake i'm very sorry bruce very sorry like wait i don't see here all right so 
Um, so Michelle wasn't there, so she can't vote. And Dina, you weren't even on the commission, so you don't vote. Um, so do I have a motion to approve the minutes of April 12, 2021? As so amended. Moved. As amended. Thank you, Chris. And could I get a second? I'll second. Great, thank you. Um, roll any roll. discussion? Roll call vote. <laughs> All right, roll. <laughs> All right. Favor, uh, Mr. Garstel. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. The chair is an aye. Also passes unanimously. Thank you, Kristen. Very well written minutes. As always, I appreciate that we are so up to date with the minutes. Thank you. If I did forget, Ruth, which I still, I, I can't believe I did. No worries. All right. We all knew he was there. We knew it. All right. Um, Topics for future meetings. Is there anything anyone wants to, uh, Mr. Gerstel? No, it's no, this is easy one. <laughs> um, and we might have touched on this in a prior meeting, and uh, Kristen and Stacey, you can tell me this is correct, but I think there is unauthorized use of Avery Field by Beth Shalom during the week. That just by driving by there, like at noontime, it seems that there was a bunch of kids out there that I'm assuming, I could be wrong, but I think it might be one of the temples using Avery Field in the outfield during normal times. But Kristen, please correct me. Last week? Uh, today. I noticed it last week, actually, I drove by. The last week was school vacation, so it's tough to say if it was just pick up and random, but if it was today, then yeah. We can reach out to them and just talk to them. The only other thing that I know this came through CPC and I know it's probably something that we're gonna to have to look into is, I know there's gonna be requests coming from the select board in regards to a naming policy for a parcel of land that I don't know if we have jurisdiction over or not, but it has to do with the Needham Accessible Reservoir Trail. Um, Kristen or Stacey, is that under our jurisdiction or is that under a different board's jurisdiction? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it. Oh, I actually think it's under the select their property, but we um, we, we certainly it through that trail. I mean, actually, our former director was a big proponent of that trail, and I think we mm -hmm. spent a million dollars on that trail, and it's a fabulous trail. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's our jurisdiction. Is that correct? It's on our jurisdiction, but I believe we are the stewards of it. Is that correct, Tristan? Yeah. I learned that today. And the select uh, yeah. board goes through all the changes. Uh, and right. own very little. Bylaws of the state and of the of the town. The Park and Recreation Commission serves as trail stewards for all open spaces in the town of Needham, regardless of jurisdiction, which is why school playgrounds and school fields fall to the commission after school use is done. Okay, but how does that fit with our naming policy? Because we have a naming policy somewhere. I don't know where it is, but we have one. Um, but it sounded like we have to work cooperatively with that naming policy, right? With, uh, not that I don't want to, but it's not just up to us, right? I think it's up to a few groups because they're bringing it to commission uh, conservation commission as well. So I believe yep. they're just looking for your approval, your okay, or your discussion. Okay. Are they going to send us something, Stacey? I don't. We don't have something, right? We don't have something yet. They will. They were planning. You will receive something. Okay. All right. So I saw what they they have proposed, which was the the. Amity Trail or the Amity Accessible Trail? How do you say it? Amity? Amity. 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 What, what does that even mean? That oh, It means like heavy <laughs> gathering. Togetherness. It comes yeah. from the Latin derivative. Oh, sh I know it more from Diversity. <laughs> if you've ever watched those movie series, it's a great movie series, but um, it's like Kumbaya? Is it like, like Kumbaya? Togetherness. <laughs> It's it's group think. It's the caring and and, and loving of others. Um, so so everyone everyone will know that we didn't think up that name, right? 
<laughs> we would have had a concrete name, right? We would have called it's it friendship Red between nations. Friendship. So it's a collaborative term. Friendship mm -hmm. between. Nations. Okay. Well, you know, whatever. Um, I did. I <laughs> forward in honor of David Summergrad, who I did know years ago. Oh, he passed away a while ago. He was a very active school committee member and I think a town meeting member, but um, he didn't have, I don't believe anything to do necessarily with park and rec, at least in my recollection, or I don't know about trails, but um, anyway, he was someone who was an active volunteer in town. Um, so, all right, well. The select board did discuss it at their last select board meeting. Um, I don't know what part of that meeting it was, but it's definitely posted to the YouTube page if you wanted to watch. Um, the other thing they put in consideration, which you'll see is um, changing it from trail to path because of the length of it. Okay, all right, it's because it is rather short, right? It's too short for a trail. Okay, so, okay. so they're not asking us for suggestions. They will just be asking us to kind of ratify- Support what their name change. Okay, all right. Well, when they send us something, we will um, take it up, put it on the docket and come to some resolution. Okay, all right. So I think that is it, unless uh, anyone has something else they would like to bring up. Stacy. So on permitting and special events, um, when we receive special events from groups, we often hear that well, so-and-so on the commission said I could do this or so-and-so on the commission said this was okay. We just wanna make sure and reiterate that they use our online permitting form at all times and they go through the department so that we can make sure we understand what's happening and bring it to you and not in the other direction because then there's a lot more back and forth than needs to be. Um, so we just reiterate, reiterate that all commissioners just have them fill out the online forms or call the office. We are in the office full time now, or at least one person is in the office. More often than not, you'll find all of us in there now because as we're gearing up for the summer, we just kind of have to be there. Right, so. and um, okay, thank you. That That is uh, well noted in um, all the years I've been on the commission, we have often as commissioners um, said something that later on the director had to correct us. So thank you for that reminder. Um, do you see us going to in-person meetings anytime soon? Depends on what your definition of soon is. Before 2022, yes. Okay. Um, I'm on another board and we are hoping, not a town board, but we are hoping to meet in June, um, based perhaps outside, but we are planning to get together in June. So I don't so know what last, they're thinking. my uh, last conversation uh, with town management is that you know, they are aware that the boards and commissions want to meet in person and they're working on a way to allow that to happen that's universal for everybody. Um, okay. And until then we will stay remote. But the, the town halls and the town buildings will be opening on June 12th, I believe, July 12th, oh. um, fully. So, you know, that that is coming. Um, okay. Right now, all the buildings are open by appointment only, including ours. That's good news. Yeah, terrific. All right, thank so you. As I hear more, I'll uh, let you know what the great. regulations uh, will be. Yeah, Commissioner Williams, something? Yeah, I was just looking for an update on uh, Fabian. Good oh. call. I was going to ask. His first official date will be your next meeting, May 10th. Um, and he will be driving. Uh, Dina Fabian's our incoming assistant director. He will be driving up here next week. And um, he said he will be available before the 10th to do some meetings or some Zooms or things like that, um, or perhaps come into the office a couple of days. But his first official uh, day will be May 10th. Great. Terrific. Looking forward, Looking forward to it. Uh, Mr. Kersel. Just quickly, uh, Bruce and State and Cindy, I know that you had interviewed uh, Fabian, and I actually met him last Monday with Stacy and Kristen. Uh, he was very enjoyable to talk to. I think he will be a great fit for the Park and Rec, uh, you know, department. 
uh, very personable, very energetic, and I, I think he will be a, a great hire. So great job with the interview process and great job uh, vetting it out. And I, I think we're going to get a winner here. Yeah, terrific. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Dina. I just have a quick question. Um, when do you guys typically do like summer hiring and all that? Is that done by this time of year or no? Ongoing. Define typical. Um, <laughs> I started in COVID, Dina. Um, I know, that's true. We have just um, finished our returning staff applications. So we know who's coming back and how many spots we have open. And now we are just promoting this week um, the other options. I would, yeah, somebody asked me and I had no idea. Yeah, so it's now, <laughs> typically I would love it to be sooner, um, but COVID tends to slow everything down and without an assistant director, it, things got slower. So it yeah. will typically be sooner than this. Okay, thank you. If you have friends, Dina, that are looking, that are 16 or older and are looking for summer employment still, they can visit- In fact, I do. Oh. website. Um, which is needham, ma.gov slash park and recreation. On the left-hand column, there's a button that says employment and the summer application. <laughs> okay. Oh, live stream all over. Can you, give, can you give us more details on that? Yeah. <laughs> so we're currently hiring. Spell it out again, slower. Life. Are you hiring just for pool or for everything? Nope. Um, so summer counselors are st there's still some summer counselor positions, perhaps some group leader, but they those are going to be not 16 year olds. Those are going to be a bit older. Um, and then lifeguards, water safety instructors, pool maintenance for our handy friends, and uh, booth attendants at the pool for our friends that have money conscious backgrounds. I will definitely spread the message. Thank you. And customers. I, in fact, yes, I'll, I'll be in touch with you. <laughs> Great. Great. See, I see my time is up and thank you for your time. <laughs> yes, Kristen, your time is up. <laughs> All right. So um, our next meeting dates are listed Monday, May 10th, May 24th, June 14th. Um, thank you, everyone. Appreciate um um, your time to appreciate your attending and Stacy and Kristen appreciate your hard work. So um, we'll keep you posted on what goes on at town meeting and, you know, feel free to stroll by because we'll be in the parking lot. So um, that being said, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Great. Thank you. All right. Bye. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>